All right, uh, tonight's talk, Space Simulation Visualization Software Demo, the Kerbal Space Program, NASA Eyes on the Solar System, and Universe Sandbox 2. That's our, keynote, our keynote speaker, has been an amateur astronomer since 1968. He has volunteered NASA JPL Solar System Ambassador and a member of the Warren Astronomical Society. He writes astronomic, or astronomy and space articles for the blog of the Vatican Observatory Foundation and assists with some of their IT operations. He has been a computer gamer since the age of modem coupler, Star Trek, and Pong. Computers have evolved quite a bit since those days. Graphics, hardware, and software Dating myself. can now create near photorealistic animations of planets, spacecraft, model the dynamics of rocket flight and orbital physics, or simulate the moon plowing into the Earth. He will be doing a live demonstration of some of this software. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Bob Tremblay. Thank you, Thank you sir. Hey, well, that was very nice. All right, yes, I'm Bob Tremblay. I've been an amateur astronomer since, uh, the, 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 since the Apollo era. And um, I'm a member of the Warren Astronomical Society, and they've kept me real busy the last four years. I was their publication director and outreach guy for four years. I'm also a volunteer NASA JPL Solar System Ambassador. If you don't know what this is, it's a really cool program where they, uh, NASA JPL looks for people that do a lot of volunteer work, and they recruit us to go out, and we get to sit in on mission, uh, we get to sit in on teleconferences with mission specialists, engineer scientists, get the latest scoop on stuff, and they give us a whole bunch of materials, and then we have to go out in the public and spread the good word of NASA. So uh, I've, uh, I do a lot of astronomy outreach. This is uh, me at my wife's school, uh, teaching a bunch of kids about the sun and showing the sun through my telescope. Uh, I blog for the Vatican Observatory Foundation. I went full time uh, for them early this year. And uh, so Brother Guy is my boss, and that, that's pretty cool. And um, the apps I'm going to show you, my wife and I used as part of the Endeavor Space Academy. This was an after-school club that we ran at her school. And I, I created this because, you know, one, 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 after doing all the astronomy outreach I've been doing for years, one of the things I found out is that the general public's knowledge of astronomy is very small. And so I wanted to give the kids in this school the very basics. But also, you know, uh, how much of the history of the space race or the space program gets taught? Nothing. So I wanted to do that too, and that's what I did with this club. And so about a half hour of that, then a half hour of these apps, and some of these apps were incredibly popular. So yeah, I've been a computer gamer since forever. Some of you may remember modem Star Trek. Things have come away since then. Uh, so with the advent of uh, multiprocessor hardware and, and graphics software and cheap memory, um, the, this processor you see is the one that is in my laptop there. So I bought this laptop specifically because it is a gaming laptop and it's very beefy. So one thing I wanted to mention is so like yesterday I found out about this. It's a, oh, it's called Overview VR. It is a virtual reality um, essentially a tour of the universe that's done by a movie producer. So this would be pretty cool to be showing it, something like an astronomy at the beach. Um, I, as I said, I just found out about this yesterday, and I don't have a VR set up yet, but I might. So uh, less, less PowerPoint and more simulation. That's yeah. yeah. That's a, excuse me, that's a simulation of the Russian N1 not launching. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you, I mean, I'm going to sit down here, sorry. Okay, so. So this is uh, NASA Eyes on the Solar System. This is a free app for the PC and Mac. Just think NASA Eyes, and you can find it. Um, it starts off, this is the launching menu, and you can go Eyes on the Earth, and this has climate data galore. You can see animations of uh, airflow and CO2 and methane. It is just amazing. Eyes on the Solar System. Um, this is pretty much the default app. It allows you to see the solar system and go to any current space mission, planets, asteroids, just a tour of the solar system, it's fantastic. 
Eyes on Exoplanets allows you to explore exoplanets that have been discovered by Kepler, and it's got a huge list of exoplanets with all of the planetary systems modeled and information on the star, and, and some of them, they've got some really bizarre planets modeled in here. So I'm going to go into Eyes on the Solar System. It starts off looking at a top-down of the solar system at the current date and time. And like, like most game software, you can, you can pan around up and down. And this, this, is the, this is the solar system. You can increase the time. Hello. Okay, we'll increase the time this way then. Do that. You can pause it. You can uh, zoom in to any, any planet. Now, unfortunately, eyes requires an internet connection. It downloads all this stuff on the fly. So for uh, venues that don't have Wi-Fi, you, you can tether it to your phone. It's not optimal. I actually wrote them about this today. But this is really, really cool. So where is the International Space Station? Yeah, I hope I'm not getting you sick there. Zoom in on the ISS. It renders the entire. Now, this is actually low res. I could turn this up to high res. But yeah, and what's really cool about the International Space Station, and I didn't know this until I actually started working with this app, was that as it orbits, the center section rotates, but the panels don't. I did not know that. This kind of makes me wonder, is, is docking at one of these moving ports difficult? But anyway, so it has, the app has a whole bunch of built-in tours. If you have a favorite mission, you can see the Cassini mission, Voyager, Juno. Um, one of the cool things is um, landing of the Mars Curiosity rover. Um, you can always reset it by going back out here. So you can see how this would be great for classrooms. I, and, and Pardon me? Yes, they've got the Tesla car. They do have the, they added that in in a recent update. There it is, SpaceX Starman Roadster. And let's uh, change the video, there you go. So yeah, TESS, what they just launched, TESS, that is here too. So there's, there's this orbit. And you can just do this on your computer, you don't need PC Mac. This doesn't really require that beefy graphics of the three apps. This, this will work on most PCs. And it, it, all of these apps will take as much graphics and as much memory as you want to give them. But yeah, this, this should run on marginal PCs. But what's really cool, let's go out to Saturn here. Oh, no, right there. So we just search on NASA Just eyes think, NASA eyes, and you will find it. So yeah, there's, there's Saturn. I, I, yep. So yeah, this is really, really fantastic. So I only have about 15 minutes per app, so can somebody let me know when my first 15 minutes... Okay, so um, let's go to, uh, let's, I'm going to close the app and I'm going to go back out to the eyes on the earth because it is really cool seeing some of the uh, climate data. And the guy that told me uh, that NASA, every, every time you launch it, it updates data. And he says the, the, the thing that updates the most data is this climate thing. And one of the cool things here is data animations and atmospheric rivers. Yeah, this was really cool. Is this a simulation or is this real time? Real time. That's a real data. Let's see what the date, April 26th. So that's. But yeah, you can see there's just an absolute ton of different ones here, and you've got visible Earth, temperature, 
carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. So yeah, you can, you can go crazy with the data on this. So this would be great for teachers in classrooms that uh, want to stress climate stuff. And, and it shows each of the different satellites that's collecting this kind of data. So yeah, you could, you could spend hours and hours exploring all the stuff in this app. Yes? Yep. So all you have to do is put on the glasses and you're in 3D and that is wild. Yeah, so I said the, the only problem is it, it wants an internet connection. I, I've told them this morning that, you know, 90% of the time I show this, I'm at an event and I have 30 seconds to show this to kids. And I've lost a couple kids because I've been tethered to my phone and it's downloading and waiting and downloading and waiting. I said, you guys got to cache stuff. I, I got to I gotta have response times like that. But yeah, so Mars, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the Wi-Fi here and it's at, it, this is acting very nice right now. So you can see there's a lot of stuff around Mars. Boy, why is it not grabbing that? Hello. There we go. So yeah, Mars is infested by robots. All right, so enough, enough of this one. I'm going to go to Universe Sandbox 2. And I can close that down, get myself some memory back. Ow. Well, okay, I'll show you that then. Because it's quick. Okay. Come on. Start that. It starts off with a soothing female voice telling you how cool the exoplanets are. Yeah, go full screen. That's yeah, fine. You are now 1,000 light years from Earth. Looking at all the stars where planets have been discovered. Our sun is at the center. Our galaxy is home to more than a billion stars. The stars you see represent only a tiny fraction of those. Click and drag with your mouse to explore our galactic neighborhood. Okay, so I just pick, picked one at random here. Tells you about the star. Models the star system. Ah, okay, I'm in the star. <laughs> so there's the star system, and you can view the habitable zone of the star system. You can compare it with our solar system. A lot of these fit well within the orbit of Mercury. So yeah, there's, there's thousands of these things. Again, you could spend hours playing with this. Search by name. You got a name? Is it, how do you spell that? G L I E S. one it is. So anyway, yeah, you can play with that. If you had, if you had, a, if you had a name, I can probably find it. Oh. All right, so. All right, so Steam Apps coming. Let's go to Universe Sandbox 2. This is Universe, this is Universe Sandbox 2. This is, um, you can play God with this thing, essentially. It starts off looking at our solar system, but you can do so much more with this, it's not even funny. And the last one was PC or Mac, is this one? This one is PC Mac Linux. Okay. And it just went away. Why did you just go away? <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, you worked earlier. 
I'm not launching it through Steam. I'm just launching the XE directly. It is. I think it doesn't like Kerbal, but all right, I'll bring up Steam. Steam is, a, Steam is an online game, oh. like a game service. So, aha! It's the best. Oh, there you go. That might have been what was, yeah. Yeah, Steam, Steam is a uh, game purchasing and essentially archive. You can purchase a game through Steam, then download it on any device that you own. And or any any PC. So there, there's Universe Sandbox. There is there is the uh, the solar system. It starts off now. Scott Schneider came to the WAS once and, and did a, a talk about one crazy thing, crazy crazy um, thought experiments. And one of the things he did was, what would happen if the sun vanished? Well, this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, notice. Yeah, the the outer planets aren't seeing so much right now. With the asteroid belts just wow. Now Jupiter is still having a pretty significant gravitational effect on everything else. Oh yeah. Well, Jupiter is still having a pretty significant gravitational effect on everything else. Oh yeah. So anyway, Universe Sandbox it has a bunch of tutorials, and this is actively being updated very frequently. So it has um, scenarios and things that you can open up, like when uh, the, the TRAPPIST system came out. There's TRAPPIST system. They had this modeled. There's the TRAPPIST system showing the habitable zone. Is this an exoplanet? Yeah, this is the TRAPPIST, the, 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 yeah, the, the TRAPPIST exoplanet system, and it gives a definition here. So yeah, there were... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, something I noticed about um, Universe Sandbox is that the habitable zone is actually right, if, like, um, if you want, like, good water, you have to be where that third planet was. It kind of is like an orange color right between the green and the red. Because... Well, okay, one of, one of the uh, caveats, or one of, one of the things that's coolest about this is playing with gravity and um, collisions. They, they really modeled collisions well. So here's the Earth and the Moon in slow motion. Let's speed that up a little more. So what if the moon suddenly crashes into the Earth? Yep. Yeah. And how would that happen? It wouldn't. This is just this is just a thought experiment. This this is just showing uh, the the physics of it. it, it it's. You have to stop the moon. The moon's angular angular momentum would have to go to zero, and then it stop in its orbit. Now one of the coolest things they added. One of the coolest things they added into a recent update was uh, tidal forces and what happens when you're inside the Roche limit. And here is uh, uh, an example of that. Okay, tidal forces. You've got it talking. It's talking about tidal forces in the moon. And okay, whatever. Find the moon. Yeah. Okay. It's taking me through a tutorial. Yada yada. Double click on the moon. There it is. Now. Zoom closer, there, there's the moon, yay, that's really pretty. All right, so what would happen if you put the moon right next to the Earth? It starts breaking apart. It's inside the Roach limit. You don't want to go there, do you? Arr. So that's pretty cool to see that. Yes, it will. So that's pretty cool. We could create Saturn, put Saturn there, and then put Ganymede around Saturn. Now this is this gives you an example of so, something that's further away from the Roche limit will will uh, break up less, and one that's outside the Roche limit won't be affected at all. 
Something I learned from Dave Bailey, I didn't know this, a roach limit is dependent on the mass of the body you're orbiting and the mass of the body itself. So as these things lose mass, the roach limit for them changes, which I didn't know. That's pretty interesting. So what's the roach limit? That is a limit where the tidal forces are such that um, it starts to break the moon apart. You're close enough in. That's, this, is, this is why Saturn has rings. So let's see, solar system, um, it's got some really cool things. Let's see, planetary hazardous asteroids. These are all of the hazardous, potentially hazardous asteroids. That we know about so far. That we know about. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't, isn't that cheerful? So let's see. Uh, okay, fine. You're going to want me to. Done. Oh, yeah. This. Pardon me? Uh, let's see. There it is. All right. So it also can do some really cool things like um, watching a supernova. This is the sun going supernova. Not that the sun's ever going to go supernova, but you can simulate a supernova and make really pretty nebulas. And they're, they're different each time. Yes? Something I noticed that was really cool about the supernova um, simulation is that if you, uh, if you do it again, but um, look at Earth and slow it down, well, any planet. Oh, yeah, the Earth's going to fry. Yeah, but like, it gives this weird texture. So and, uh, gas giants like Jupiter, it'll take forever. Yeah, there, there's Jupiter getting nice and incandescent and having a big tail behind it. There's a question back here, Bob. Yes? How do you understand about the Jupiter? Mm hmm? Whenever I go inside of a nebula, it kind of like, it gets kind of choppy. And then there's because my computer is really bad. You need you better, better graphics card. You need more power. <laughs> <laughs> So you can make some really cool screenshots with this, as you can see. It's really, really cool. Okay, so um, Earth ex um, that would be stuff in dot space. You ever seen it? Well, I'll do. I'll, I'll show you at the very end. It's just a website, stuff in dot space. It'll come up with all of the space junk out there, and you're just gonna go because <gasps> it's scary. For this, like, how do they determine the habitable zones? Because there's there's a lot of controversy in scientific circles about what exactly a habitable zone is. And one of the more popular definitions right now puts Earth outside of our solar system's habitable zone. Hmm. It's a little bit fun. Well, we we need to. <laughs> I think I, by some definitions we're slightly outside the habitable zone. So well, we we need to work on that then, don't we? But I'm just wondering, like, what does what does this say? Uh, and where do we get that? Uh, you know, what the equation is, I don't know, but I can ask them. the The developers are incredibly responsive to questions like that. I'm they. Just wondering, like, do they do they cite like the scientific sources that they use for their models? Or? I think they do, actually. Help about form. I'll have to get with you on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they, they have all that information. I know that uh, on their website and on Twitter, at least a year ago, they were advertising to hire a planetary um, physicist to get the physics right. So let, let's open up a climate simulation. A couple things that you can do on here is uh, climate simulations of the Earth, which is pretty cool. In scale fiction. Oh, well, hold on. Before I do that, uh, I don't know if any of you watch Game of Thrones, but there's the Game of Thrones system. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to live. Yeah, I wouldn't want to live there. It's right. It's right there. Going crazy right now. Yep. 
that's just that's just a model. They've got a ton of them. All right. They've also got galaxy collisions. This is pretty interesting. This shows you what a supernova inside the galaxy would look like. So it supernova spreads out, becomes part of the inter intergalactic medium. I guess I never I never thought about how big that would be. It's it's not very it's also got it's also got galaxy collisions and different uh, there's galaxy collisions that take <laughs> but yeah, this this will take forever. This is a uh, put it up and leave it up. Time soon, so maybe we'll find out. They say it's a thousand years old. So we don't know when. Maybe you don't know when. We don't know when. Could have happened, happened already. Could have happened a thousand years ago. What's the one that they're predicting to go with in the next couple years? This year, isn't it? Yeah, I don't remember. There's one too, like the predicted this year. The galaxy's overdue. Nothing big anymore. That's a galaxy cluster. But I say you can see you can model a whole bunch of stuff here. And like I say, they're they're constantly adding adding new features and stuff. And one of the things it couldn't do that I wanted to do for Dave Bailey but couldn't is a star is not the photosphere of the star is not um, modeled as a gaseous envelope. It is uh, it's it's pretty much solid. So when you drop a planet into a star, it goes boom right on the surface. It doesn't sink into the photosphere. Oh well. Yeah, what we want to do is heat up a star by dropping a planet Now Jeff McLeod, the president of the WASH, got this app and he's been playing with trying to recreate the creation of the moon by throwing Mars at the Earth at just the right angle, and he just can't get it to work. Now, could that be because the physics of the, the game is off a little bit? Could very well be. Or the fact that maybe, maybe that was a really, really small chance of that happening just right, but he could not recreate that for the life of him. So this is Kerbal Space Program. This is marketed as a game, but it is anything but. It is, uh, it is a space program simulator. It allows you to build rockets from the ground up, uh, Lego style. You launch them, get them into orbit, and uh, get, get, do rendezvous and docking procedures with orbiting space stations, land on other moons. It teaches you orbital mechanics. It is just amazing, and I'm embarrassed to say I've logged about 2,900 hours on this on Steam. So I have uh, actually made a Ford presentation game here. I have a couple things I wanted to show you specifically in here. So when you open up, a new game, you start off at the Kerbal Space Center, which looks a lot like the Kennedy Space Center. Let's go into that big vehicle assembly building and open up the, oh. No, this is not free. This is a $40 game and, oh, for crying out loud, hold on a second. Yeah, the, the, the Universe Sandbox is also a commercial app. It uh, is available for like like $30, and it's available at teachergaming.com for like $15. Uh, Kerbal is $40, and it is also available from teachergaming.com for $17. Sandbox ships. Um, ships, vehicle assembly, paste. Okay, now I got my ship. I feel stupid. There we go. All right, so cancel. Get out. Back into the vehicle assembly building. There it is. All right, so this, this I created this thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that logo. 
Yeah, you see that logo? There it is over there on the uh, wall too. But this this shows the this shows how you build rockets in here, and from the stage up, these are the stages it goes through. This is the fairing with with the lander and everything underneath it. So how old do you think you have to be to be in the system? I have had sixth graders play this with enthusiasm. Oh yeah, a nine-year-old could play this. Now I'm not saying a nine-year-old could land on a moon, but they could certainly build something like this and, and go through the tutorials and stuff. Yeah, now NASA collaborated with these guys when it was in pre-alpha on Steam, and there are a couple in-game missions that uh, mirror the uh, NASA asteroid redirect mission, which got kibosh, but still, it's in here. You can actually go out intercept an asteroid, um, bring it back into orbit, you can set up mining on it. <laughs> it, it's really, it's really amazing. So I am bringing up an autopilot just to save time here because I can do all this manually but it is, I want to do this quick. So, so you can see the fuel, here's the fuel of my boosters on the side and pretty soon they're going to pop off. Yeah, I actually uh, showed Gary Ross this and they weren't recoverable and they fell back down and he said, those are going hit to the, hit, hit the command center. You can't have them do that. So I made sure I put parachutes on this one because we wouldn't want to upset Gary Ross. So anyway, I'm going to accelerate time on this a little bit here again for, for, for time's sake. So here I'm going up through the cloud layer. Now as I'm going up, you can flip to map mode here and you can see what your trajectory looks like. So right now there's my high point, my apoapsis. This shows a communication line back to the uh, uh, satellite dishes. Can you set up elsewhere on the Yes, yes. And you can set up geosynchronous, which I've actually done. There's a uh, geosynchronous satellite right there. All right, so let's back it down here because I want to show you the separation. I'm time accelerated back down to normal now. So I'm going to manually pop the fairing here. More space. Well, that's actually, it's all on that trajectory, so it's going to fall back into the ocean or that continent, depending on where I am. So I am still rising up here. I, I've set my max height 225, so I'm still rising up. But for right now, I'm pretty much going horizontal. So now, in the game, 70 kilometers is uh, the edge of space. I reached the edge of space, my communications antenna automatically popped out. So I've got a space station in orbit here, and I'll be showing you that. It's the fax station. And I've also put a, uh, a polar orbiter scanner, and I want to show you how that works. So I'm continuing to rise up here. Almost reached the top of my uh, my 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 tr top of my uh, orbit. So now my apoapsis is set to what I wanted to. Now I have to circularize my orbit because the low part of my orbit is still well below the planet here. Oh. Well, I'm I'm suborbital right now. So what I'm doing here, you go. I've gone up to my top point. Pardon me. Uh, no, this is this is PC Mac Linux. So now what I'm doing is I'm pushing the low point of my orbit out of the planet. Now there it's above the planet. And reaching a circular orbit, you're going to see the, the periapsis and the apoapsis start to flip like this. And 
Yay for autopilots. I can do this all manually again, but it would take a little while longer and I don't have the time to do it. So now I'm in a perfectly circular orbit around the planet and there I am. I just love the way this thing looks. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the moon. So I want to set the moon as a target and there's my target. And I am conveniently in the same orbital plane as the moon you can see right there. So I can use a, a transfer uh, method called a Hohmann transfer. Bring that up, Hohmann transfer. Now, I'm going to click create node, blam. You have any idea how much math just occurred there? <laughs> it is ridiculous. It figured out that there's my maneuver point. That's the point I need to be at. The moon is right here, and it's orbiting in this direction. I want my apoapsis, or my far point of my orbit, to be there when the moon is there. So it figured out about where that's going to be right there. So now, but let's see exactly what it did. Focus the view. OK, there's my home and transfer. That's going to plow me right into the moon. <laughs> I don't want that. So let's adjust that a little bit. And that's too much. One, two, three, four. All right, so there we go. So let's execute that. And now my ship is going to get into the position it needs to be when it's at that maneuver point and orbit around the planet. Now notice the ship isn't moving from the ship's perspective, but the planet is. It looks from the planet's perspective, I am rotating. I love how it, it shifts your perspective like that. So now I'm going to get to my maneuver point here. Yes, you could, there, are, there are mods that allow you to change it. Okay, so I'm sitting here. I'm thrusting in this direction, prograde, and my apoapsis, the far point of my orbit, on the other side of the planet is what's growing. Welcome to the craziness of orbital mechanics. When I saw this for the first time in here, I was just blown away. So now, from the viewpoint of the planet, that, that's what my orbit's going to be like when I'm in the sphere of influence of the moon. I'm going to slow down here. Again, yay for autopilots. I could do all this manually, but it would take me three times as long. Okay, so now I am at a uh, at such a point where when I when I hit here, I'll be in a parabolic uh, orbit around the moon, and I'll need to slow down. So let's see. Let's make sure I've got I'm pointing at the sun, so I get enough power. There we go. And this is one of the cool things. Now I don't want to wait five hours to get there. So I'm going to tell it to time warp. OK, so I am now in the sphere of influence of the moon. And it's really amazing when you do this with a gas giant in this planet, how you're, you're, you're 30 days away from the gas giant and you're still within its sphere of influence. It's just amazing. All right, now this is really cool. This trajectory, think of this like you're on a swing, all right? And you're going to be going really fast down here and then slow up there, right? Well, the place you want to go into orbit is where you're going the fastest, which is right there at the periapsis. Now I'm going to, I'm going to create this maneuver node manually. Add maneuver. At this point, I'm going to want to decelerate, so I'm going to pull this back, and my orbit's going to do that back around. So let's execute. Let's execute that. I don't need that up anymore. All right. So you. Now this is cool. How it, when it gets near the, the near the near the body you're coming toward, it changes your viewpoint. Yoink. Not yet. It will be. So here I am, and so there's my orbit. Now I'm in orbit. The elliptical. 
coming in and And there it is. Now I'm in a circular orbit around the moon. So let's, let's, let's land and not crash, hopefully. I want to land it about here, so I'm going to add a maneuver here. And again, what we have to do is we have to slow down because we're in orbit. So we're going to, we're going to want to point, point our butt backwards just the same way as we are right now. I'm orbiting this way, and I'm thrusting that way, so I'll slow down. And here's what happens. Brings your orbit in until you're suborbital just like that and let's warp it around to here so there I am right there coming around now I've, I've seen people on Facebook uh, that play this game all the time say I've never even gotten to orbit and I'm thinking to, I'm thinking to myself uh, I, I can land on any moon of any world in this in this entire game because I've learned how to do the orbital mechanics of it so I'm just well after 20 you'd hope you'd hope so so now I'm going to execute uh, that maneuver since I'm ready for it execute it getting getting into the position I don't want to talk about it <laughs> and that's probably not accurate it's probably not accurate because I was actually doing a lot of stuff offline. All right, so I'm suborbital. There's my trajectory coming up. All right, so that stage is dead. No, this is just a probe. I'll show you a command module. Uh, I'm not going to take this back to the planet. I, I've got uh, a command module docked with that space station. I'm going to show you undocking and, and re-entry. Okay, so I have completed that burn. I am now falling like a rock. Let's fall a little bit here before I get in my uh, warp to here. All right, yeah, so now I'm going to, again, I could do this manually, but it would take me twice as long, so I'm just going to use this landing guidance, and it's going to do what's called a suicide burn, which means it's going to go down really fast and break as hard as it can, and you're going to go, ah, it's going to hit. It won't, I hope, sometime. Yes, I am. Like I said, I could do this manually, but it would take me about twice as much fuel because dropping and hitting the surface scares the heck out of me, and you're going to fall over, aren't you? No, don't you do that. All right, so there's uh, all of the experiments. How did you stop falling over? I, I turned uh, the, uh, the reaction wheels back on. I mean, if I turn the reaction wheel on and tell it to go sideways, I could flip it right over right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to. So uh, there's the, there's the uh, curiosity-like cam with the laser. So I've collected all this data. Let's store it back in the container here. And we want to go back home. So this, this I designed as a uh, return Oop, wrong way. So anyway, you can see how that how, how how that's pretty darn cool. Let's go back to the tracking center. Yeah, you can go ahead and crash. I don't care. All right. Um, let's see the fax station. There we go. Now this, it wouldn't be a simulator if you couldn't cheat. I, I, I built this in the Vehicle Assembly Center and took this and went into orbit. 
with a, with a mod because I can. Now, these guys are your Kerbals, all right? They're like a, they these are guys are like a cross between Pixar minions and Frankenstein's monster. I have a feeling the reason they did that is so when you kill them in rocket crashes, you don't feel as horrible about it because there's a lot of crashing involved in this. So what I've done is I've created this station. It's a pretty typical station. And what I've done is I've docked this very familiar looking command module up there. And what I'm going to do is tell it to undock. And I'm going to take you back. All right. So let's turn my RCS thrusters on. Just like they do it in real life. And get away from the station. All right, so I am in orbit. Let's go retrograde. And let's just do, let's see, the engine is off because you don't want your engine active when you're hooked onto the space station. So let's do a little puff here on your main engine. And the space station goes away. All right. So now I am in orbit with the space station right next to me, but that's okay. It's going away. So I want to land in the ocean, and let's... And I want to land in this ocean right there, so I need to go over this desert here. You all remember uh, uh, in Hidden Figures where they were trying to figure out where they needed to be to... Uh, decelerate and get, well, this is where I need to be, right here. Now notice I'm not doing any math whatsoever. Yeah. All of the math is, is handled by the game engine itself. All right, so I'm over the point where I need to start decelerating. I've got my butt pointed in the direction I'm going, so I'll be, I'll be accelerating retrograde. And what I'm going to do, let me see my orbit coming down. I'm in the atmosphere, and I want to stop it about there. So I'll be aero braking. I actually want to land about here, but I'm going to be aero braking. So at this point, I don't need I don't need that thing anymore. And it's, all right, I'm going to pop my parachutes right now just so that they will, uh, did you already do that? Let's see. All right, so they're already done. All right, so now I'm just going to accelerate time a little bit until I hit the top of the atmosphere. Doink. All right, so now I'm at the top of the atmosphere and uh, at, at 70 at 70K. You, and it, it's, it stops your time acceleration when you hit the top of the atmosphere. So let's speed it up just a little bit here. So you can do this, too. You can see inside the cockpit. And there are mods that make all of these things work. You can conceivably fly an entire flight from within the cockpit. So now, starting to see some atmospheric reentry there. And... I love this part. There's a mod which is unfortunately not working, which creates a huge plasma trail behind you. This is the sometimes mods stop working with a newer version. And that's what happened here. So yeah, all the the creaking of the ship. Yikes. Uh, no, I am actually going to do a little bit of ambient light boost here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just dropping like a rock. 
There is a drogue chute and my other chutes. Doing some time acceleration here because otherwise we'll be sitting here forever. I actually cut that drogue chute, can I? Gone. So I recover it, and that, that's, an, that's, how, that's how the entire mission ends. You recover the vessel, but you know what? There's a mod that actually has those. But um, so I wanted to show you one of the cool this polar orbiter here. I put I put this in here because I wanted to show you how things uh, like the lunar reconnaissance orbiter and the Mars reconnaissance orbiter and, or, and Earth satellites orbit this thing has a lot of different things on it. This is a radio plasma wave detector. This is a magnetometer. And uh, this thing, which I haven't deployed, is a uh, low-res radar altimetry. And let's start that scan. Bring up this map here. Now this shows you a map of the planet, and I'm going to time accelerate here so you can see what it's doing. is scanning down on the planet as the planet rotates, actually, here, let's do this. There you go. As the planet rotates underneath it, and you can see it filling out over here, which is exactly the way these kind of scanners work. Can you do that with, like, gravitational scanners as well? Yep. Yeah, it's got these things. Uh, there are a whole bunch of, let's go back to the uh, Space Center here. There are, as, as for science that you can collect with these things, the default game comes with a thermometer, a barometer, a gravity meter, uh, a seismic meter, an atmospheric tester, um, but there's, there's mods that add like that, that curiosity camera here. Here's all the science parts I got right here. So yeah, a lot of different science parts. These are experiments that you can run up on the space station and return. Um, these are like, these are, these are really big things, <laughs> Part, space station parts. Um, it's got, yeah, here you go, temperature, uh, gravity, seismic. Um, these are all sounding rocket experiments, uh, radio plasma wave, dust experiments. That's a separate mod. Um, global irradiance experiments, uh, x-ray scanners, magnetometers, surface samplers. And as you can see, it's just ridiculous the amount. Yeah, this the, the game is forty bucks and it goes on sale for twenty five frequently. The uh, the science experiments you've got to complete missions and get paid, so to speak. Right? Well, there's there's several different ways you can play this. It's got a sandbox mode, which I'm running right now, which gives you, as you can see, everything. Here's here's all the command modules and all the fuel tanks and engines and and stuff. And if you just start off with sandbox mode, you're gonna go, what do I do with all this stuff? It's got um, a science mode and a career mode. In the career mode, you accept contracts. The contracts are put this satellite in this orbit at this inclination and collect this science data and return it. Sometimes it's uh, you can just transmit the data. Sometimes you've got to return it in an experiment return thing like that. So yeah, different contracts. It's got, again, there are mods for, for doing space tourism. You can send tourists up to your space station, keep them there for a while, land a tourist on the moon. Some of the cool ones are, are, are like the futuristic ones where um, I'm doing in a career mode. It just had me land something on a moon and mine minerals from it. And that's all the contract wanted me to do. The next contract in the line is lift those up and return those to the planet. So yeah, you've got you've to design stuff like that. It, the, the default game comes with a whole bunch of uh, a sample rockets. I tried actually doing, 
that a falcon tester i loaded those falcon landing things which are just really really cool but this thing this thing is just unstable as heck but there are people that have done whole falcon programs where these things return and uh, everything is reusable there is like again there's a mod called the kerbal operating system where you can write scripts that can control every function of every part and people have, did people have, I've, I've seen a video of a guy just pressing go and it's an entire SpaceX mission, all done in program. It's, it's just amazing. Okay. Any questions on this? So this, this is, uh, so this was, this was the most popular app um, that the kids used in the Endeavor Space Academy. And, uh, some of the kids, some of the kids were, they wanted to get into orbit really bad. Some of the kids wanted to build what I could only call as rocket castles with <laughs> hundreds of kerbals in them that split apart and blew up all over the place. They were quite beautiful. And the, this one kid came up to me after one session and says, I killed 260 kerbals. And I'm like, ah, that's great. <laughs> But yeah, the cool thing about this is that if something doesn't work, you go back in here to the drawing board, you fix it. And uh, the, 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 the fixing of problems and coming up, I mean, that little lander I built for you guys and showed you there, I spent three days getting everything right on that. So yeah, you can spend way too much time on this game if you want to. No, no, Kerbals are these ridiculous little alien guys. Let me show you, if I only got a few seconds left, let's get out of this game, go back to the main menu, and just show you some of the training stuff. Now, yeah, there's, there's videos all over, the, all over YouTube on how to start these things. It has training, and these, these missions are brand new in the latest version, but these training missions take you from the simplest of missions with the littlest of, of rockets to basic flight, suborbital, orbital, getting to the moon, so it leads you by the nose on how to do this kind of stuff. And I didn't want to click on that. Remember, uh, stuff in space. Oh yeah, let's, let's just bring that in. You know, let's, let's quit. Yeah, I'll show you. Is there like a, a gravitational, like a LIGO, or what was the LISA? Is there a laser interferometer uh, experiment you can do? No, and that... Not yet, but there is something that looks very much like the James Webb Space Telescope. Okay, this is stuff in dot space. And you can see the orbits of all of these things. Isn't that neat? This is in real time? Yeah, isn't that, isn't that scary? It, it refreshes these from a giant database of these things. And you click on them, and you can see... What's really cool is the groups. You want to see the GPS satellites? The Iridiums. We're clear. Come on. Why are you not doing that? What was the company that well, it's not doing that refresh. Permission and they set up cube sets that were too small to be tracked. Wow. Wow. Is that right in line here? China or someone like that? Yeah, I can't remember. There we go. Yeah. Oh, we got slapped in the wrist really hard for the SEC. GPS satellites. Oh, Iridium. So yeah, this is this is really cool. I mean you can zoom way in on the earth and see all this stuff pretty much real time and tells you whether they're Let's just click on that one. What is that? That is a just debris, but it's got it's got payloads, debris, all sorts of stuff. But just seeing that, isn't that scary? There are two geosynchronous rings. I there, I knew I knew about that one, but I didn't know about that one. Kind of what it, it's not like from your perspective, it's kind of moves up and down. Yeah, you get back to that. You got to keep tracking a little bit, but it doesn't move that over the course of the day. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's uh, amazing that when I was born there was like five things in space. You can't go anywhere on the planet without seeing satellites. Yeah. They're talking about that, that uh, space insurance is going to start getting super expensive because of all the space junk now. So if you send a satellite up, so here are the scenarios that uh, NASA did, the uh, asteroid redirect. Uh, just one second, Bob. Yep. We're on time. Okay. Is that, no, is that okay to continue on a little No, you're good. That, you're good. That's why I just wanted to show you really quick. These are the missions that NASA has in the game. So... That this is how they got the permission to use the NASA logo in the game. But anyway. Oh, thanks. So yeah, computer games have come quite far since Pong. Space War. Space War, oh my goodness. Our 